All right, this your boy Butler, man. It's the best day of my life, man. Tomorrow's not promised. Let the Lord use your shoulder. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about a situation where I kind of self-diagnosed. And I was like, bro, you, you, you must be institutionalized because you're acting like an inmate right now. This is a time where I just judged myself to the point where I kind of felt bad. But then when I thought, here's the situation right here. So this took place like a ways back, man. This was like, not back in the day, but back in the day. So, um, I was living alone. I was single. And I was doing my thought thizzle, man. And so I had this young lady, cool young lady. We had been knowing each other about, about a year. Like, the interaction we had was, like, always pleasurable. Like, always, like, just organically dope. Uh... Never really had no complaints, man. Sensual, like smooth, like cool individual. Wasn't never no pressure. And I was in a place where I was like, you know, I wasn't trying to bring no extraness to the board. She wasn't bringing no extraness to the board. So every blue moon, we might link up. Uh, so, so what's taking place is, So I think like something happened with like the uh, apartment caught on fire or her apartment was flooded or it was something, I don't remember which was. It was something where it was like, she didn't have access to her apartment for a while. So she was just like, hey, when she hit me up, she was like, I need some help. I'm like, what's up? She was like, Shh. um, there's a fire or a flood and I need somewhere to crash for the night cause uh, I don't want to spend no money on no hotel. I'm like, shit, bet. Ain't no problem. Like I said, it was always good energy, never no pressure. You know what I mean? Professional, professional as hell. Uh, not a cheat, not a ratchet, not a, you know, not none of that. Good people. So, when she said, I'm thinking she just going down the list because this was early on in the day. And then I hadn't heard nothing from him. So in my mind, I'm just like, when I got home, I was saying to myself, you know what? I'm glad she didn't call back because I'm not really in the mood to, you know, I don't really, really feel like being bothered. Although I had taught her, like, yeah, it was no problem. When I got home, I was just like, man, I don't even feel like being bothered with nobody. But sometimes I get like that. That's why I was feeling like, bro, you institutionalized. Like, something wrong with you. Because I want to be around people, but then I don't want to be around people. And I was like, is that some Pisces stuff you got going on? Like, like what's going on? What is it? So then, um, without a phone call, like, I'm on the way. Bro, I just hear somebody knocking at my door. So, when I look outside, it's more than one person. So, long story short, when she come in the house, it is her. It is her teenage son and it is her dog. <laughs> and I am perplexed. I am itching. I am I am itching with anxiety, bro. And it kicked in. Like at the time I didn't understand what it was. But at, in retrospect, I'm like, bro, that was anxiety. Cause I literally went and said in my truck. Did I have this truck back then? I went and sat in my truck for about for about an hour and a half. Just to like decompose because I felt like my personal space had been violated. Like you brought a teenager and an animal into my home. You ain't said nothing about neither one of these. And like I said, if she would have said something about either one of them, I don't know what my reaction would have been but I just would have liked to have the heads up so I can, you know, don't say that I need somewhere to crash 
and you come with a child and an animal. I don't have no animals. I don't have nothing against animals, but I don't have many animals living at my house. You don't know if the animal is can go on my lease. You don't know if I'm allergic to animals. You don't know what's going on. And then you brought your son here. So, so I'm like, cool, man. You know what it is. I've been in situations where you know that I can't control. You can't control nothing. If you don't have no control over the flood or uh, the fire or whatever happened, um, you know, shit, you good people. I ain't, you know, I don't think you'll turn your back on me, so I ain't gonna turn my back on you. But what takes place is this start to go on like the next day. It's time to get up. Like, it's get up and go time. So I'm like, I'm finna get up and go. But when she get up and go, she get up and go by herself. I'm so confused. I'm so confused because you get up and go. You done left your son and your dog at my place of residence. I'm so confused. I'm so confused because your son not knowing if he being watched or not. As soon as that dope shit, go what he started doing. Rambling around, checking shit out, touching shit. And you got your dog here? You left your dog here. So, I advise because I eventually leave and I advise I say hey man you know I got some other stuff going on man and I would really love to help but this is what I got going on so whenever you know y'all finish doing what y'all doing make sure that your son locked the door because whatever I got going on it got to take place by like 12 o'clock so I'm just like, she, she like, cool. So mind you, I'm saying, hey, whatever I got to do, it has to be done by 12 o'clock. I need for that house to be clear by 12 o'clock. So I assume by 12 o'clock that, that the premises have been vacated. That's just the assumption because every time I spoke to this person, you know, sensible person. So I'm thinking, you know, everything cool. So I just so happen to be trimming around after 12 o'clock. It's around about 2 o'clock. I stopped by the house. When I stopped by the house, I hear movement. I go into my room. The sun is sitting in my room watching my TV. Gets up as I'm walking in, walks out. He don't say nothing to me. I start itching. My anxiety didn't kick back in now. And I work with at risk youth. So it's not that. It's it's the. So I say, hey man. Didn't your mama come and get you and then y'all leave? He said, yeah. I said, how you get back in? Oh, I left the door unlocked. Oh, you left the door unlocked. So you left my house and you left the door unlocked. And then you came back. So I say, oh, he a child. Ain't nothing me to say to him. That, you know, there'll be no disrespect from me to him at all. He's just a child. So I call. I don't call. I think I text. I'm like, hey, man. Now, as opposed to me addressing the issue and saying what's really going on, because I don't want to bump heads with nobody. I'm just like, hey, man, I got some stuff going on tonight, and I apologize for the situation, but your head got to go. She's never been disrespectful, never been unpleasant, and everything's always been cool. 
So, but I'm there when she gets there to pick up her belongings. I don't know what a dog is at at this point, but she get her son. She ain't say nothing nasty, man, but I could tell she had an attitude. And then so a couple of days later, no, I'd like the very next day later. Or sometime afterwards, I go, I'm on social media. Was it MySpace or Facebook? It was Facebook. It was definitely Facebook. So I'm on Facebook. And I'm looking at her post. And her post, she's with like this uh another dude. And then they got pictures of where they was just like on a cruise and out of town. And they booed up. And she like, oh, he used to get on my nerves. You used to get on my nerves. But uh, thank you for being a real man. And then I look again. They're on the post where they done took a like a like a weekend getaway. I'm like, maybe. At first, now, this is the, the institutionalized me was this. I was just happy that I was by myself. But what? What I, what I would like for her, I would have liked for her to know that it wasn't nothing personal with, with her. It was me. <laughs> it's something wrong with me, cause I'd be liking to know what's going on, and I'd be like, I don't like to be in a situation where I feel like I can't make a decision. I don't have the option to say whether this is going on. When you pressure me into some, or I feel like I'm being pressured into some. I'm just like, man, it ain't gonna be right. It's just like, it's fight or flight. And I'm just like, I don't know how to respond to it, man. So I don't know if I owe her an apology. I apologize. Cause maybe I should have communicated that though. It's been a while, but maybe I could have communicated that better. Or maybe possibly the Lord was working through me. <laughs> Yeah, you know I man, cause maybe you supposed to been with that dude and you opted to come to my house when that's who you supposed to been with. So this a testimony. The Lord used me to get you to where you were supposed to be. Thus, thus my new tagline. Let the Lord use you, shouting. Yo, man, that's my new tagline. I allowed the Lord to use me, man. The Lord used me to get you where you needed to be. You don't owe me an apology. You need to thank God. You need to thank God for working in your favor. Yo, that way. Because we keep God first in everything we do. Church, sanctuary. Let the Lord use you, shouting. Ah! <laughs>